Hi, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us here on the Clan Hatton Association YouTube channel. I am delighted to introduce to you today Graham Tom, and he is the Shanaki of Clan McThomas. Now, you may have um, watched some of our channels before, and there are several different spellings and pronunciations for which I will put up here on the screen for you to see Shanaki. Shenaki and Shenihi, and we often have Philip Beddoes on the channel, and he prefers the Shenihi pronunciation. However, I do think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Tom, but I do believe that um, it's all basically the same sort of title. Yes, that's right. We are often asked the question, what is a Shenihi? Graham Tom is the current holder of the office for Clan McThomas. Centuries ago, each Highland community and clan had its own Shanaki, Shenaki, or Shenihi, who was a recorder and reciter of family history and genealogy. Proper respect for one's genealogy and ancestors was important in all dealings and in warfare between the Highlanders. The clan's Shanaki is a personal appointment by the chief, and today he or she is the custodian of genealogies, records, and histories of the clan and its chiefs and members within the greater clan family. His or her responsibility is to ensure the myriad ties of the lines and families and the clan families are both secure and accurate as they progress and evolve through the fullness of time. Graham Robert Tom was born in Sydney to Robert Alexander Tom and Lillian Merle Lane. He went to school at Mossman and North Sydney. His dad was a tram conductor on the North Shore trams and his mom worked in lots of situations. I like that. His sister Carol lives in Brisbane with her family. Graham joined the Commonwealth Public Service, first working as a clerk with the Department of Civil aviation in Sydney, he came to realize that to obtain promotion, it was best to work in Canberra. The first position Graham applied for and obtained was as a cost clerk at the government printing office in Canberra. He worked in several agencies in Canberra until 1991, when he was appointed as Deputy Commissioner of Tasmanian Branch of the Department of Veterans Affairs, and in 1995, Graham was transferred to DVA Melbourne and retired there in 2001. While in Canberra, Graham studied first at Canberra Technical College, obtaining accounting and cost accounting certificates, and then successfully undertook part-time study at the Australian National University. Obtaining an economics degree, he is a fellow of CPA Australia. Graham married in Sydney in 1964 and has three children, Kathy, Michael, and Louise. After separating in 1990, Graham married Rosalind Marie McKean in Canberra in 1992, gaining another daughter, Melissa. All up there are 11 grandchildren and four grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. I meant to say that. Congratulations, that's phenomenal. And in recent years, Graham has been a member and treasurer of the Kilmore Hospital Board and the Mitchell Community Health Service. Graham's interest in genealogy started in 1968 when he read an article in an issue of the Reader's Digest magazine about researching your family history. Graham realized that he knew nothing about his ancestors other than his parents and his grandparents. So Graham joined the Heraldry and Genealogy Society of Canberra in 1972, then the Society of Australian Genealogists in 1974. He saw an item in a Sydney newspaper about the Clan McThomas and joined the Clan Society in 1975. Jack Toms was the Australian branch secretary at that time, and in 1983, Graham attended the Klan gathering in Centennial Park, Sydney, held in the presence of the McThomas chief. As a result of tracing back all of his ancestors in Australia, Graham now knows that he is 39% English, 28.1% Scottish, 31.3% Irish, and 1.6% Welsh. 
One of his achievements is knowing the names of all of the ships on which 25 ancestors came to Australia during the period of 1790 to 1883. Graham has had many successes and still some brick walls he would like to solve. His favorite ancestor is probably Obadiah Aiken. I'm hoping I'm going A NSW Corp Sergeant who arrived in Sydney with his family on the ship's surprise in 1790. He has managed to get one line back to the 10th century in England the Ashby's of Leicester, though without sufficient proof. In more recent times, the internet has created a lot more opportunities to discover new information, as he strongly believes in taking every opportunity to publicize your research interests. He has his own family tree website. And this website is www.grthom.info. The other joy is being able to visit the sites of importance in the life of your ancestors. And so Tom has traveled to the UK four times to visit the towns of his ancestors and to undertake research. Graham feels that serious researchers should support their interests by being volunteers. He has presented papers at three yearly Australasian conferences and held various positions such as President of Heraldry and Genealogy, Society of Canberra, Secretary and Treasurer of the Australasian Federation of Family History Associations, State Treasurer of the Tasmanian Family History Society, and lately President of the Kilmore Historical Society. He also has taught family history with the local U3A group. Graham has attended four clan gatherings in Glen Shee and Pitlochry. Following raising the issue of what was the condition of the past records of the Clan McThomas Society at the 2004 AGN, he was appointed as chair Society's Archives Committee. Since 2011, Graham has been involved with the administration of the Australian branch of the Clan McThomas Society, holding positions as acting branch convener, branch treasurer, and branch editor. In May 2010, Graham was appointed the role of Clan Shaunaki by the 19th Chief of Clan McThomas, Andrew McThomas of Finnegan. At the AGM in August 2014, he was elected as a member of the Clan Society Council. He retired from the council in 2022, having served two full four-year terms. In 2016, the Clan McThomas Society Council approved a proposal by Graham that in order to assist members, he established the Clan McThomas DNA group hosted by Family Tree DNA website. Graham is a fellow of Heraldry and Genealogy Societies of Canberra and has compiled five cemetery transcription volumes published by the Society. He has also published four small books about his Iken ancestors and held an Iken family gathering in Sydney in 1990. In 2023, he published a book of poems by his grandfather, Alfred Oram Lane. Some of Graham's research can be seen on his website. Again, that site is grthom.info. Graham has also made substantial contributions to the original Clan Society website. And so, Graham, I just want to thank you so very much for being here today to share with the viewers of both Clan McThomas and also the Clan Hatton Association a little bit about yourself and your role with Clan McThomas. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cindy. Now, Graham, you are in Australia, and I feel like um, having read your introduction, we might already know the answer to this question, but have you lived in Australia your whole <laughs> life? <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, born in Sydney, uh, and I've lived uh, in Canberra, Hobart, and Melbourne, and now north of Melbourne in the country side. It's a bit chilly this morning, actually. <laughs> it's actually a fog outside at the moment. Another thing I might add to what you read, 
which in a way tells it all, um, is that I do have um, two great uh, two grandchildren who were born in Dallas, Texas, and uh, but they live in Australia with their parents, of course, and uh, and my wife has a connection to Syracuse or near to Syracuse in New York State. A little bit of added information. How wonderful. I myself was born in Texas, so. <laughs> oh, right. Way to go. <laughs> I've only been to the U.S. once. We did go around the state. We ended up in Mexico. <laughs> wow, that's intriguing. And I'm I'm so glad it's a little bit cool there for you this morning. I wish you could pass some of that coolness here. I'm currently at my home in Las Vegas, and it was all of 111 degrees this afternoon. Wow. Fahrenheit. So also, Graham, uh, we were talking a little bit uh, just a, a short while ago and um, emailing back and forth. And in the intro, again, that I just gave for you explains a little bit about my second question. But if you want to kind of reiterate or expand upon your interest in the Clan McThomas history and how this all began, for you and I understand you were in Canberra when maybe your interests have started. Um, do you want to expound on that just a little? Um, yes, it, it certainly it start all started in, in Canberra back in 1968 and uh, and has been continuous since then. Um, it's not the only thing I do. <laughs> I, I also play golf and uh, I used to go in car rallies and uh, and a few other things but in between the constant one was family history I, in other words I got hooked and uh, my father uh, my late father um, he was not interested and I found it difficult uh, to have long chats with him about the the Tom family. Um, he told me a few things, but not very much. He was just, he couldn't see why I should do family history, where the reverse was the, so with my, my mother. Uh, she was very keen about it and helped me. And my, my grandparents were still around then, and, and they also added to the picture. So in doing research, one of the things you must do at the start of your research is to talk to your close living relatives because they will know the stories about the family, hopefully, although they will probably know more than you. And, and so that's one of the key things when you start because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and you need to get that information that people can tell you and surprisingly they might hold little bits of in information on paper or have little treasures I, i've got uh, my grandfather tom uh, one of the little hobbies he had was a pianola rolls he had a collection of pianola rolls and he walked around the area where he lived in sydney and he would hire them out uh, and then walk back and exchange one pianola roll for another and made a little money on the side. And one of my treasures is I have one of his rolls and that's one of my little treasures I hold. Wow, and you make a very good point because I do feel like, first of all, I, I personally feel like history and genealogy go hand in hand. And um, if you have these interests, it is rather addicting. And it's a great to point out because we also we often get asked the questions both here in the comments sections, across social media and in person um, about genealogy and where one should begin. And so you make an excellent point. Talk to your relatives, get some information. Um, I was able to get my grandmother to write certain things down while she was still alive. 
And I had kind of a cheat book, I should say, that was kind of laid out what questions I should ask. And of course, nowadays, you can record. Most anyone can record on your phone if you need to. Um, but getting that information is key, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. My grandfa grandmother, Lane, on the other side, um, she told me, this is an example, she told me that my her grandfather drowned in Sydney Harbour back, you know, years before she was born. And uh, so I started searching on that basis, but it actually took me 30 years before she was born to find when he died. And he didn't die in Sydney Harbour. He drowned in Botany Bay, which is uh, a, a big bay to the south of Sydney Harbour part of Sydney so she was nearly right so in other words the stories they tell you can be uh, added to uh, may, may not be totally correct maybe a good clue to lead you down the right path <laughs> oh absolutely yeah and the other one is you, you, you should start from yourself as far as getting the official records which will make your family tree such as birth deaths and marriage certificates and that's also an excellent point um that's pretty much all that i know to tell other people go after these certificates because that will lead you um on a trail to finding exactly who's who if you don't have their names um so You've been interested in your own family history and genealogy. When did the clan McThomas history come into play? And again, you you have a very well-written introduction and biography. And so we've answered that to some degree. But um, at what point did you realize, I really need to study about clan McThomas and then get involved? Well, that happened in... 1974 no 1972 i think it was yes it's hard, hard to remember it's 50 years ago <laughs> oh, I know. and uh uh as i men mentioned uh, as you mentioned in the introduction um i read an article in the newspaper about the recent formation of the australian branch of the claire mcthomas society and so I contacted Jack, uh, and uh, we he issued a a handwritten, would you believe, handwritten newsletter every now and then. So I thought, well, that's part of your family history, really. You know, for some reason I felt more Scottish than English or even Irish, and um, especially with my surname being a Scottish name. And so I joined the uh, Australian branch immediately and uh, slowly got involved in uh, with the society, uh, which happened more after I retired from work. I had a fairly busy work life and uh, and so that sort of took and I was also had three children to look after with my, my wife. And so we had a busy time and sort of family history and the clan involvement was in the background a little bit. I still kept going with them, but it wasn't until I retired that I really got involved uh, and eventually got on, on the council and the chief appointed me as... Uh, as a Shawnee, but really, uh, I I wasn't all that keen to be Shawnee because I didn't feel I would really uh, take part in the the wide role of Shawnee because it's it is more than just the family history stuff. It's also about possibly being the bard for the society and also the, the storyteller of the society. But in the Clan McThomas, those two roles were taken over in by 
clan members that could do do that those two jobs better than I could. So the chief asked me to be Shawnaki, mainly because of my family history background. We're so glad you're here with us and making up what's part of the larger Clan Hatton Association, which was the Confederation. Um, these roles are important. And um, so we know when you became the Shawnee for Clan McThomas. And do you want to expound or tell a little bit more about what that role is and what your experiences in that role have been? Right. Um, well, my role is, in a way, limited to uh, the family history side of, of the society. And so I'm there to do basically three things. Uh, one is to uh, look after the chief's family history. And I, I've done that in the past by researching new avenues back in time and adding little bits of information to what was already known about the chief's family tree. And the in a way also, I'm looking after his family tree from the point of view of what is on the internet. And that's a little bit of a problem, especially from your fellow citizens in the US. Uh, they tend to think, well, oh, not necessarily every, everyone, they tend to think that if you have, have a set, set name of the Clan McThomas and you re research a family history going back in time, then you must have a connection to the chief's family tree. And so you'll find a lot, and I mean a lot, of family trees on websites such as Ancestry uh, have a tree ending up with a connection to the chiefly line. And they're all wrong. There is no connection. As yet, we've not had one person in the USA, except one, uh, make a connection to the chiefly line in in doing proper research. Uh, people are making assumptions and they're just wrong. Um, the one connection to the US, of course, is the chief's son and his uh, wife. They live in the US, as you probably recall. Yes. And so there is a connection to the USA, but, but recent one. Um, the biggest connection overseas in the chiefly line happens to be in Australia. There are a lot of people in Australia who are descended from the family, the chief's family tree, including, would you believe, the, the wife, Tammy, uh, of the former uh, Prime Minister Fraser of Australia. Mm -hmm. She's connection, connected to the clan McThomas. Mm -hmm. and, and there are other uh, prominent Australians who have that connection. Um, just because of one family coming to Australia, who were uh, she was a, a granddaughter of a chief, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, and they settled in Australia and had quite a large family uh, through the generations. And so there are many Australians connected to to the chief's tree, but not so in America, yet to be found. There, there could be, if there is a connection to the chiefly line in, in America, it'll be around the 10th chief. Uh, he, he had a number of children and grandchildren, and there possibly could be a connection to the US through one of those descendants. Um, and so... Uh, that's one aspect. Another aspect is to uh, do research uh, for members of the society. I'm available uh, anytime, free time. I don't have to pay. And uh, and I, I do get questions and we do 
uh, I, I do undertake research for for members. We are uh, only a small clan, but that's one of the the benefits of being a member. Uh, for others who are not members, and they write in inquiring about uh, a connection to the clan. Um, I, I give basic advice on research and uh, and advise the, them on uh, whether they're connected to the clan or not. Um, I'll give you an example in this area. Um, we've had quite a few inquiries um, with the name uh, Macumba, M-A-C-C-U-M-B-E-R or C-O-M-B-E-R. And we got a number of inquiries about that name and still do. And in the end, I decided to go a bit further than just offering advice with one particular inquiry. And between the two of us, we researched the name fairly well. And there is no connection to Scotland in the name. Um, and the origin of the name is probably Maycumber, M-A-Y-C-U-M-B-E-R, and it's from the southern area of England. And uh, so I wrote an article about all that and put it on our website because that helps people then uh, see what the issue is with that name and they don't have to write to us. That's very smart. And I think it's important to make the distinction that um, genealogy and history is complicated. It's It can be very complicated. And I know that, you know, when I've had uh, Philip Bedos on um, the channel, we've gone over some of the history and some of the battles in history. We, we cross-reference manuscripts and we let people know when there's a discrepancy there is so much out there um, mm. and so much to learn and so much to information to go over and pour over and genealogies. And so you make an important distinction that um, as well, just talking a little bit about, you know, somebody is going on family um, history online, ancestry.com and and plugging into people that may or may not necessarily be accurate. And so everyone should understand. We we talk about this a lot on this channel, um, accuracy and um, checking references and checking that people that are writing things have the credentials to do so. Because frankly, also, um, anyone can publish a book on Amazon with no credentials and no one having fact-checked um, what you're writing about history or genealogy. So it's important to get it right and, and know where to go. And so that's why also we're very happy to have you here with us, Graham, today, because uh, we do get a lot of questions about different steps and names of the different of the 12 um, clans of the Clan Hatton Association, for which, you know, we don't have a person with Clan Hatton um, who who really does that. It's the individual clans um, and people such as yourself. And so thank you for being so generous to give of your time to people you don't even know to help them trace their family. And um, so that kind of segues and leads, leads us into talking a little bit about DNA because I feel like it's been kind of a double-edged sword, but I love that pretty much anyone in the world can get their DNA done, um, taken, and then you can you can see, okay, where's my DNA? And I think that this phenomena, if if you will, um, of being able to do this has intrigued people and gotten people very interested in researching their genealogy, which also gets them interested in their history, which I think is a good thing. Um, can you talk to us about your work with DNA, your experience, and and just let us know all things about DNA. Give us your knowledge. Yep. Uh, thanks, Cindy. Um, 
I might have, I might start off with uh, explaining a little bit about DNA itself. Um, it's uh, it's uh, for family history purposes. It's a tool. It's not the end, the be all and end all of family history by any means. Uh, so it's just one of the tools a family historian has that they can use. Um, it can produce, though, substantial change to your family tree or, and it happens quite a lot, uh, people have uh, the DNA tests and they don't get anything out of it. And it does happen. And because it all depends upon people around the world having DNA tests. Uh, and there is one big hole I'll just mention. In France, it's against the law to have a DNA test for family history purposes. Wow. I did not know yeah. this. Yeah, yes. So it's not the whole world. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some other countries that have similar law to um, I think it's more popular in the Anglo-Saxon arena than elsewhere, and probably in the the uh, African uh, nationals in the USA uh, with that African background. Um, so, if you're interested in having a DNA test, you need to appreciate that there are three tests, not one, three. And the companies like 23andMe, MyHeritage and Ancestry only generally undertake one test, and that's the autosomal test. Um, the autosomal test uh, can be taken by males and females, and it's looking at the more recent generations. In fact, it really is only accurate back to about five or six generations. And they're the tests that uh, quickly associate you with um, uh, an unknown sister or an unknown grandparent in the recent generations. And as an example, um, my grandmother, Tom, who was a, a maiden name was Bullivant. Um, her birth, deaths, and marriage certificates, which in Australia are very good information sources, some of the best in the world, um, did not reveal her father's name. Um, later on, after knowing all that, some years later, I came across two records that revealed the father's name. And in a way, I, I really needed more than just those two, but I didn't have anything else at that time. And so I accepted the, the name of my great grandfather and researched that line. Along came DNA and I have had my DNA done with four companies and all four, I had no matches to a grandmother's supposedly father, who was a, a wardle. I had no matches whatsoever. And that's probably unusual across four companies. And, but, the last test I had was with Ancestry, which happens to be the, the largest number of tests in the world, over, I think they're over 30 million now. Um, and I noticed that I was having matches uh, that were significantly close to me for the name Burn. And I thought, that that's interesting. And I researched these bird ancestors, and they came from the same area 
where my grandmother lived. And I wrote to a couple of the matches, and between us, we came to the clear uh, conclusion that my great-grandfather was a burn. And so I tossed out of my tree a, bull, a, a wardle and put in place a burn simply based on DNA. Um, there are no pa paper records to prove that. So my proof is totally dependent on, on DNA in that case. And I changed a, gra a great grandfather. And that can happen to people when they take a DNA test. I, I need to mention the other two DNA tests uh, are, are Y DNA, which can only be taken by males. And this is the one that's very important for the clan situation because it'll take my DNA right back on my Tom side, my father Tom, my grand grandfather Tom, my great grandfather Tom, and so on back thousands of years. Wow. Although the, the, the paper records don't go that far back. Wow. Um, and uh, so that's the important one for a clan society is the Y DNA test for men. Why it's only for men is that men have the Y chromosome and that's what makes them male. And females don't have a Y chromosome. They, they only have 22 X chromosomes. And there is another test called the MT DNA test, and that's for the female line. And that can go back indefinitely as well. Uh, and so people think, a lot of people think, because they deal only with ancestry, who only does the autosomal test, uh, that it's the only test. It isn't. There are definitely three. And that's where family tree DNA comes in because they're the main firm that does the three tests. And one of their facilities they have online is that you can have a group uh, uh, for family tree purposes online on family tree DNA. And so one of the groups, for example, is, is Tom, another one of my ancestors, Turnbull, and another one, Weir. I all belong to the group that those name groups on family tree DNA. But also we have a Clan McThomas group on family tree DNA. And what we're trying to do there is encouraging males who have a SEP name to undertake the test. Uh, and we're gradually building up numbers. We're up, up to about 80. And we're trying to figure out the different streams of DNA within the clan McThomas. I hope that that all makes sense. Now I come to the Macintosh aspect. Yes. And this is interesting. Where does the clan, where does the clan McThomas chiefs come from? Clan Macintosh. I believe it was the six chiefs, grandson. Yeah. I'm yes. not mistaken. So does that mean the chief, the clan McThomas, and the chief of the clan Macintosh have the same DNA? In theory, it should be, should it not? You are correct. You and I may share some DNA. <laughs> that would be fun to realize. And, you know, I have yet to do any of my DNA tests. And so I actually want to. And um, would you recommend that I do the three that are available to me, all three of them? No, you can't do the three. Only, oh. only your, your brother can, if you've got a brother. I have three brothers. Well, there you go. They can do the Y DNA test. Um, and... Uh, what I would re recommend is that 
uh, you read up, there, there are websites that look at the five major testing companies and sort of analyse them online and say what, which company does what. They, they do a little bit differently and they provide different services. And some of them are, are stronger in some countries and some of them are weaker in some countries. Um, so it's best to read up on a website that's comparing those different companies and there are sites. Okay. Uh, we could, I could look up uh, one for you and send, send the URL if you, if you want it. Oh, that's wonderful. If it's not too much trouble. And then I will, of course, post um, in the comments section and or um, in the description um, some of this information of where people can go to find, um, you know, where they can take these tests or or get more information and do some research before taking these different types of DNA tests. But I think, again, they're so fascinating. And yes, in theory, we should have the same DNA. Um, and I know that the the chief of the clan Macintosh and the chief of the clan Hatton were split, the titles were split around about 90 years ago. And uh, the chief of clan Hatton, the hereditary chief, actually is in Australia as well now. And um, so it'd be interesting to see, you know, where all of our DNA um, kind of fits together. I, I'm, I'm interested, but a little, a little afraid, but I think more intrigued now and excited to actually do my DNA test. <laughs> we should compare notes, Graham, after to see what DNA we might share. And um, hopefully I can get one of my brothers. Um, yes, yeah, so you've got to be comfortable with realizing that when you have a DNA test, the autosomal test, which you know, I, I generally recommend Ancestry DNA for that purpose because it's got the biggest database and the Y DNA test with family tree DNA. But you've got to realise that it might reveal something unexpected. <laughs> yes. And so you've got to handle that when it happens. <laughs> you know, and when you were speaking about your grandfather and um and that's that's a great point. I think you know because of these reasons, people should get their DNA tested, uh, so you can you can get to the bottom of it, as it were. But also, you know, what if you've got a sibling out there you did not know about? I mean, there's any number yeah. of surprises that can crop up. What if you aren't at all who you thought you were? You know, there are many cases of people being adopted as infants that maybe haven't been told. And so you're right. They, there are some definite surprises that could come up that you must be prepared for. <laughs> yes. And also people need to appreciate that the DNA results that each company uh, analyzes are the same for every company your dna doesn't change no. you go to a different company what changes and and this is an important point too part of um the results of your dna is that you get a an ethnicity uh exam uh, results in other words uh my ethnic background is basically uk and it will give you percentages of that split. So in the case of my little Welsh connection, it comes up at, at down around 2%. And it, it, my results are basically in line with the, the paper results that you read out. It's very interesting where DNA can take you. But as I said earlier, it can take you nowhere too. And that's usually caused by members of your family not interested in having their DNA taken. Um, 
There seems and, to be uh, a lack of database, a lack of database. Yes, yes. but it could happen next year. <laughs> you know, when a number of your family members suddenly think, oh, let's have our DNA taken. Or what you do, you go and give DNA test packages as a Christmas present or a birthday present. Yes, for everyone. <laughs> yeah. What a brilliant idea. Graham, you've got something here. I think that's what we should give to absolutely everyone. Getting back to why the clans involved in DNA is that in trying to work out the different streams of DNA, you know, the clan seps, you know, like Com Combi, Macombi, Macomi, Tom, Thomas, Tom's, Thompson, Macomish, Macomi, Macomish, all those names uh, are not necessarily connected to the chiefly line. And so each of those names could have a different DNA stream. They'll be generally what's called Scottish DNA group, uh, but they'll be slightly different. Uh, a Y DNA test, for example, gives you, um, you could have 111 markers and it'll give you 111 results. Okay. They are all allocated a number, uh, what your results indicate. And so the next person has 111 markers and they're compared, and that's where the matching takes place. But they can be quite different, or they can be the same. This is intriguing, and I think we should all have a, a, a look into it. If you haven't already, everyone, um, research and, and perhaps go get your DNA done, and, and let's try to see you know, where we might fit in with one another Especially, I would say, most especially Macintoshes and McThomases. You're absolutely right about that. And and see if it lines up somewhere. Um, a few yes, yes. back, that would be that would be wonderful. Yeah. So you, um, you wonder if um, I don't know what the Plan Hatton administration is like, but um, they could actually establish a DNA group for the whole clan pattern. We should do this. What a great idea. We should. I, I think it'd be worthwhile, actually. It would be very much worthwhile if you would make a, a map of some kind or a, a demographic map of some kind that kind of shows, um, you know, where where things are, are, where the chips are falling in, as it were, for lack of a better way to articulate that. Um, yes, actually. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea. And we have a new website being made as we speak. Very comprehensive. <laughs> but you need... We should have a page for DNA. <laughs> but you need you need a volunteer who likes to dabble in DNA. Okay. I, I'm not an I'm not an expert by any means, and there are people whose whole life revolves around DNA. I'm sure. And they understand what it all means. And there are different, um, you've all got the same tests and the results are the same but for everyone. Um, they don't change company to company. Um, why you have your tests done at different companies is that you're looking into their database. Um and you can share your DNA in amongst the companies as well. That's another subject as well. Um, so there, there is a lot going on with DNA, and it will continue. We're really in the early days of DNA. And companies like Ancestry and 23andMe, and MyHeritage, they come up with different ways of looking at a DNA result. And so they're improving all the time, uh, the the matching process and the eth ethnic processes. They're improving all the time. And the bigger the databases get, the more that improvement happens. I can see that now. And, you know, I had not known 
very much about it and hadn't really thought it through, but obviously that must be the case. And I hadn't really thought it, it must be all about the database, but I'm intrigued. And I, I also, again, I love how this has inspired people, young people to get their DNA done and to then therefore look into their genealogy and learn a little bit more about their family history. And I think it's just such a wonderful thing. And, you know, there's lots of questions we get asked here. And um, I just want to thank you so much, Graham, for taking your time and and sharing all this information with us, because I think that you know, people are may have even more questions now, but you have you've given a, a good account of, you know, where should we should start, why we should start, and um and and what the databases mean, and that you know the more people doing this, the the better the result will get, um and the information will get. So everyone, let's get out there, let's do our DNA, let's check back in with Clan McThomas for sure. What if I am a McThomas? I may be. You never know. <laughs> I might. Oh well. Eyes to the McThomas. Well, Philip. Well, Philip emailed me, and he's still researching his family history, and he has a a, a Thompson connection. So the question is: Is that the Thompson connection in the clan McThomas? Where where the two? I'm not. There's a couple of things I really need to say. Amongst the seps for the Claire McThomas are Tom Thomas and Thompson. But they're not every Thomas and Thompson in the world is connected to the Claire McThomas. You've got to do your research of your family tree. And if your Thomas ancestor, for example, uh, ends up living in uh, the eastern highland counties of Scotland, then you can join the Clan McThomas. We we accept that there is a connection between your family tree and the clan. Uh, and the same with Thompson. Uh, so they're, they're sort of uh, restricted to a group within those counties. And you need to make that connection to make the connection to the clan. Yes. Another little issue is spelling variations of your surname. Um, I'll bet you there's spelling variations in Macintosh, as there are in Tom, um, with an S. The obvious one is with an S and not with an S. And some people think their surname spelling must be so without change go back hundreds of years and that's not so no. spelling variations happen all the time and and an example is our convener in our branch uh his surname is, is spelt c o c o o m b s but if you go back in his family tree, which he has done, it becomes one of the, the, the spelling changes and becomes one of the clan's sept names. Spelling variations are a subject all, all alone. <laughs> yes, no, I know. And we've touched a little bit on that here um, because for many centuries in the Highlands, many people were very poor and they were not educated in reading or writing. And so quite often, and then when you had, you know, the Battle of Culloden, where people previous to the Battle of Culloden mostly spoke Gaelic, and then all of a sudden it was outlawed, and they could only speak English, and they were sent out to the four corners of the earth. And yep. you can imagine, you had to do your best phonetically, um, first, I think, and foremost, and so you do have different variations of spelling um, and sometimes it means something, as in with Clan McThomas and with Thompson in the case of the P versus no P. That's that's another um, issue of that's a different, as I understand it, lowland family name with the P. Um, yes, that's right. So um, so you, you, there's there's a myriad of different uh, 
uh, things, but yes, the, the spellings. And, and I've heard from many people, even on the Clan Hatton Association Council, three people that I know of who go back, they research their family line just a little ways, and lo and behold, the surname was spelt differently. Yes. I mean, there's this, the stories of spelling changes when immigrants from the UK and Ireland arrived in America and they really didn't know, as you said, uh, to read or write. And they're talking to the, the clerk that's taking their details on arrival and they indicate they're not sure how their name is spelt or even not sure what their name is. I mean, there is the story that the clerk looked around, saw a billboard and saw it had Smith on it and said, we'll give you the name Smith. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I do believe that. There's lots of stories like that. And, you know, and of course, going way back, and I think um, mostly prior to, I don't know, it might have been actually right in the middle of when, Clan McThomas kind of came on the scene when that sixth chief of Clan McIntosh grandson um, went over the Grand Pan Mountains which, uh, to form a, another line of which became Clan McThomas. Um, hopefully I'm saying all that correctly. But um, the, the, the point being is that people didn't use surnames. I had a whole discussion with Philip Bedos on this channel about uh, there was a magistrate um, one day, there were many, many people in a long line and they were having to describe their fathers, their grandfathers and go through their lineage in order before their, their case could be heard. And it was taking so much time that finally that, you know, the hammer came down and he said, we will invoke surnames as of now. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sort of thing obviously happened. Yes. Yeah, so. and, the, and the clerk that's writing it down, or the of the uh, uh, the local parish, yeah, he mightn't even be Scottish. He might not even be Scottish. That's a great point. I hadn't thought. What a what a great point. Oh my goodness. Well, especially you know around the border area. But uh, one other one other point I might just make is that uh, our membership rules, you might say, um, uh, enable a person with a clan connection to the clan of Thomas to join, even if it's their uh, great grandmother is a, one of the set names, but you might be now a Smith. Um, so in other words, if you look back in your family tree and you come across a Tom or a Tom's or a McCombe, uh, then you can join the society. I would love to do that. Hopefully we can see you back here again, Graham. I really, again, really appreciate all of your time and efforts and you are absolutely fascinating gentlemen and you have a lot to share. And I would love to have you come back anytime, anytime you like. Um, I'll reach out to you if you come across something amazing that you've learned or additional information we should all have reach out and let me know otherwise it would it would be nice to see you here regularly as regularly as your time and schedule permits and as you want to be oh thank you very much cindy that's uh, hopefully i'll be still around well you just keep playing golf <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true it's, that's it's, true it's doing that's everything. why i play it i play it to get the exercise Thank you so much for being here with us today. That's it was a fine, great, Cindy. great pleasure.